Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you like the channel, please be sure you hit the like and subscribe button. So it's been one year since I bought my Ranger. What I wanted to do today was talk to you guys about the features that I bought into, some of the problems that I encountered in the first year, how I dealt with those, and then ultimately, what did I add to it since I've had it? Because uh, you can do this a couple of different ways. If you're looking to buy a new boat, if you're looking to get into boating for the first time, you can do several different packages to begin. I ended up kind of going in a little bit the, more than just the entry level package, but I didn't go crazy like you can with some of these boats. I mean, you can, you can buy all the stuff right up front and spend thousands and thousands of dollars just on top of what these things are selling for. And as you guys know, these things are not cheap these days. So it's gotten a little out of hand since I bought my Nitro before this. So let me just walk through a couple of things that I got in the beginning and then a couple of the problems that I've had, how I dealt with them, and then ultimately what I've added since. All right, so just a quick walk around. So you know, uh, when I bought this boat, I went with the Tournament Elite package. What that gets you is the Minn Kota Ultrex up front. This is an 18-foot boat, the Z18. And then it gets you the Lowrance Elite 9 units at the bow, and then also one at the front. The trailer that I went with, I did upgrade to a uh, tandem axle trailer. And I'll talk to you guys in a minute um, about the fix that I had to have with that because I had some spacing issues when I first bought this boat. Did upgrade to the charger wheels. I think these are slick. They look really good on this boat. And then at the back, I went with the manual jack plate. I can tell you right now, that was a big mistake. I should have went with the hydraulic jack plate. I am going to want to lift this because a couple of things I've ran into, I'll talk about in a minute, is I believe this motor needs to come up at least a couple of inches uh, because I don't believe it's getting on, on plane fast enough. It's a pretty, pretty slow hole shot. All right, so if we go around... Part of the Terminal Elite package, like I said, ultimately lands you the, the, the Lowrance Elite 9 units. These are okay. Um, I will say that uh, some of the newer graphs they have out there are pretty slick. I'd say if, you, if I was you, um, if I was going to spend any money up front, lesson that I learned with this is I would upgrade the graphs to something more uh, larger in size because then I'm already wanting to add another unit up front now that I've installed Active Target. All right, so. Here's the uh, kind of a view from the top. I mean, I, again, nothing, nothing special with that Lowrance uh, Elite 9 unit. It's a good unit. Like I said, when I'm fishing, um, it's just a little small, especially again, since I've added active target. I'll talk about that here in a second. I really want to do a stack graph. So we'd love to talk to you guys that have added a graph. We'll talk about power in a minute because that's something else that I've realized that uh, I really need a little bit more now that I'm running all this equipment um, that I've added on since. Talk about power. So I do have the power poles added. So this was not here before. We'll talk about the add-ons in a second, but a three bank charger with batteries for my trolling motor and then the cranking battery right here. I, these are uh, AGM batteries. They are not lithium. I do want to put lithium batteries in here. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on that. Number one, they're very expensive. Number two, I've already got all my power hooked up right now, and I feel like I might have to take somebody who knows a lot more about this than I do in order to get the, get the right power that I think I'm going to need based off some of the other things I'm going to add based off everything else I've added so far. I'm already drawing a pretty good amount of voltage. The Ranger does have the uh, battery indicator lights back here, and I noticed last time I was out on the lake last weekend, I, I was only out for maybe two and a half hours, and I was half drained battery. I was running the active target. Um, I didn't motor around too much, but that, that kind of scares me if I'm gonna be fishing a tournament for eight hours and I don't wanna run out of power. This is more of a preference thing. I added the second console. I just feel like the console itself, um, for me, it was great to have a little bit of extra storage in this boat because it's an 18 footer. Hey, look, there's money in there. Uh, it's just not enough, uh, not enough storage for me, um, given the fact that I'm you know, some of these 21 foots have an extra compartment up in the front. I do like the compartments. They are lit. One complaint I have, um, this one in the center, where I keep a lot of my, my tackle and just some extra gear. I really like how they have the, the lining and the plastic here. What I don't like is in the rod lockers, there is just carpet. And there's not really any ventilation in here. So, you know, as stuff gets in here, it gets wet that's going to mildew after a while and that carpet's going to start smelling bad which maybe down the road if i keep this boat long enough i'll end up doing some things like uh 
ripping that carpet out, maybe putting something else in there. But honestly, if you can get an option without carpet in your rod lockers, to me, that's the way to go. All right, so the very first thing I added to this boat, after having it for a couple of mo months, jumping in and out of this boat sucked. Getting out of your truck, getting on the tongue, putting your foot up here, jumping up on this and getting in. Boat EFX is a great company, USA American made products. And these steps are awesome. They were simple to install. I did this myself. And man, let me tell you, getting in and out of this boat is so freaking easy now that I wish I would have bought these with it. You can actually purchase steps with your trailer. Uh, these were about, I think, $250, um, you know, delivered. And it took me probably about 30 minutes with the help of my wife to install. What I would tell you is I'd add it to the trailer. It's really not much money in the beginning. To me, it's well worth it. You're going to thank yourself having to crawl in and out of this boat as much as you are, especially if you're like me. I fish by myself quite a bit. Launching the boat by yourself, huge uh, game changer for you if you're, if you're jumping in and out of the boat a lot. All right, so here's some fun toys that I added to the boat. So we'll talk about the power poles last because they're at the back. But as you can see, I have the first generation active target installed to my boat. And I went to DD26 Fishing, which is a great company. I actually have a couple of accessories from them that are on this boat. And I went with the Live Foot. You know, there's a second generation active target system out there by Lowrance. Um, I, I, I've heard some good things about it. The difference between the first generation and the second generation from everything I've heard is just a wider beam. This one's about 18 degrees. And I think the other one is, I, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's plus 25 at least in terms of its forward facing beam. I love this thing so far. I've had it out in the water a couple of times. I'm still playing with it. But what I love about this live foot is for those of you guys that have these things mounted just on your trolling motor, where your boat trolling motor goes, so does your forward facing sonar. So if I wanna see what fish are over here, my, I have to turn my trolling motor over there. Yes, I could set down my power poles, but if I'm not in the right depth of water, I may not be able to do that. I really wanted to have an independent system moving this outside of that. So if I'm in the winds blowing this way and I'm pointed that way and I wanna fish that way, I could take this, turn it. I have these two foot controls that you can buy with it. So you can turn it this way or that way, or you have a key fob as well. It draws a half of amp power, so it's not too much draw. And I had uh, no problem at all installing this into the power that's up underneath this Lowrance unit. I will tell you, the guys in the network system, if you have a Lowrance Elite Series uh, tr uh, graph, if you buy this and you still want to network into your overall front, uh, I'm sorry, your console and your bow, you do have to buy a separate uh, networking system because there's not enough Ethernet ports for this, this graph and that graph at the console to talk to each other. That cost me an extra 300 bucks. All up, all in, this, that networking system and installation was about 2,500 bucks. Wasn't too bad, wasn't that, that cheap, but I can already tell you, I, I can't believe I've been fishing as long as I have without this system. It is so cool, it's so fun to have on your boat. Um, highly recommend if you do buy a boat, add this stuff after because you're going to want to see what system you want to run. If it's Active Target, they've got the Garmin one, they've got different ones. I went with Lowrance because I good reviews about it, plus I already have the Lowrance units. So certainly uh, I think worth the investment, but something I would do after I buy your boat. All right, last thing that I installed was the power poles. I went with the uh, Pro Series 8 foot uh, Sportsman Anchor Series 2. Um, really great system so far. I really like these. I'm waking them up. Both of them make that chime that means you're good to go. You see your green light blinking, you're good. And these are them on the back. Nothing real special to see. They do have the covers. I bought these extra. Um, they were a couple hundred bucks for the pair. Um, so when I'm going down the road, they just you know stay clean. But um, the guys did a really good job installing this. They did have to add these holes in the back. They got the hydraulic lines ran really good and, uh, and did a really good job installing the, the uh, units down here. I, I like them right here. They left me room for the battery over here that I may need to add later. But um, overall, good job by uh, Premier Boating Center out of Conroe where I bought the boat. 
You go see Greg. He's a good dude, and uh, he's taken good care of me since I bought it. All right, so the very next thing which I just bought is the Power Stick Yolo Tech. So this is really cool. I just also got me a new GoPro 10 Hero Black 10, and this is great. You can plug it into here. You can uh, mount your GoPro all the way up in here, and then you got your power switches. I'm um, sorry, your power connections for your USB port right here. Plug your camera in right to that. You can run your camera, draws off your battery. Again, another power issue, but it's really cool to be able to mount it up here and you get a great view of yourself fishing, be able to take lots of pictures and video that you want, not have to mess with the camera. Um, I can't wait to try this out. I actually haven't used it on the water yet. I plan to use it next week on the uh, tournament when I go fishing. You know, on the front, I uh, showed you guys the live foot from DD26 Fishing. These are awesome. These steering locks from DD26 Fishing are great. It's aluminum, this uh, steel cable that connects both of them on either side. And then additionally, what I have is the motor saver um, versus a transom saver. Um, this thing between the motor and it goes in down here. It's super simple to take on and off. Again, machined aluminum made in the USA. DD26 Fishing, best customer service, awesome products. If you haven't checked out DD26 uh, you know, products that they have for your boat, man, you're missing out. These guys are super awesome, super great customer service. And I've now pretty much bought all my accessory products from them. I probably will continue to do that um, because these things are, these things are money. Uh, if you're going down the road, keeps your motor from going back and forth, obviously, and just keeps it straight. That'll save on your steering. And then this obviously saves on your, uh, on your tilt trim. So great product, highly recommend. So problems and fixes that I've had with this boat, if you guys probably saw, if you didn't, I had a video where these uh, tires, when I first bought this boat, it was actually about right up here, which actually looked pretty good in the profile, but it was rubbing up against this board on the back. So the good news is, is this comes with the torsion axle trailer, the uh, axle's adjustable, so they actually adjusted it down and locked it in there. Yes, it's riding a little higher, but man, I am so much, I feel so much better with the clearance that I have now on these tires uh, between this and, and actually the board that goes up against the, uh, goes up against the boat when you boat pull it on the trailer that uh, it's, it's much better. So the only other thing is, is the weight. So this is a Mark 200 four stroke. Since adding these power pulls on, I notice when I try to get on plane, it whole shots a lot slower and um, simply when I slow down I'm getting a lot more water back over the boat I mean it's just the weight that's back here now with these batteries added the power poles it's the heaviest motor you can put on here jack plate so I do have to cruise down it a little slower and just kind of make sure I'm cognizant of the fact that the waves are coming behind me otherwise a lot of water can get back here you do not want water getting into any of your compartments obviously because that's a bad problem to have and you definitely don't want to get too much water in the boat I mean, even if your bilge goes out, you could have some serious issues um, and, and you certainly don't want to have any of that fun. But I, I do believe that if I would have went with a little bit bigger boat, um, obviously it would have been able to carry the weight that I've put on this boat a little better and I wouldn't have as much back wash over the back as I do with this boat. Next problem I was having was my live well. So my live well, when I first uh, used it, um, and this was really bad when I had this tournament I fished, the first time I fished the tournament this year, would actually only fill up, I don't know if you can see it, probably about right here, because one of the pumps, uh, the impeller was actually messed up. It was brand new from the factory. It wouldn't fill it up all the way to where it needs to go, which is essentially right here, um, in order for it to fill it up and you can put fish in here. I mean, I gotta tell you, that first fish tournament, I, I, I didn't know it was broken and I really didn't do all that great. Uh, thank God, because I couldn't have put any fish in here anyways that would have survived, and that's not good, obviously. Um, so, ended up getting that fixed. It was no big deal. Again, Greg over there at Premier Boating Center took real good care of me. And, uh, and, and no complaints, but you kind of would think you get a brand new boat. I mean, something like that should work. So guys, last, last thing is, is just power. If you guys are running the lithium batteries, I would love for you to leave some comments in here. Um, there was an opportunity to put lithium in this boat but I still don't believe it would have been enough power for what I'm doing. So right now I'm running the active target. I'm running the, these are all ads. I'm running the live foot power poles. I want to add an extra graph, you know, plus I'm running the, the, the live well system. 
Um, plus everything else that happens on this boat with the lights and everything else. So, I mean, there's a lot of draw coming off this battery. Um, I just uh, want to make sure, A, I'm buying the right batteries. What's good out there? Would love to know that in the comments. You know, did you do it yourself? Do you feel like it's something to take somebody that, uh, for myself, pretty novice in that stuff and electricity, I, I probably would break something. So I know I'd probably take it in regardless. But if there's a cool video out there about just changing out your typical batteries to lithium, you know, drop it in the comments here. And as far as everything else goes in the video today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in all the links to the things that I purchased so you can go check these things out and see if it's good for your boat. I would highly recommend the things that I added on for sure because there were things that I just, hey, I couldn't just afford to dump into this boat. I mean, everything I added into this boat probably would have added an extra ten to $12,000, uh, which, you know, it's just stupid, uh, honestly. So I wanted to space it out to, to make that uh, reasonable over time versus just dumping that into the boat that I purchased right off the bat. You can do it, more power to you, but uh, you know, these boats, as expensive they are these days, it's crazy uh, how much it would be if you added all this stuff out the door. I mean, this boat probably would have went out at 85 with TTNL, which is crazy. I mean, for an 18 footer, uh, but that's just what it is. That's the price of boats. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm flabbergasted uh, the market versus when I bought mine uh, in 2014, I had a Z7. Uh, it was an 18 foot boat still with a 150 Merc on the back, two stroke. And I was out the door for like 32. Um, same size, not as many cool electronics and stuff like that. But if I would have dumped those electronics in it then, um, that boat would have probably all up and all in been probably 44 um, with everything that I would have put in it um, that, uh, that I put in this one. So just crazy. How much, that's double the price of what things are today with these types of electronics and how much boats cost these days but i guess i get it it's cost of resin it's uh just the way it is but hopefully these prices will come down and you know we can we can enjoy some of these things that we like doing without breaking the bank so yeah hey that's it i hope you guys enjoyed the video be sure you hit the subscribe button again i think it's a great entry boat you know for fun someone like me who's a weekend fisherman um as many weekends as i can go um and this year i'm trying to fish tournaments i got the equipment that i feel like will uh you know give me a good edge but also let me have a little bit of fun too uh when i bring out the kids and stuff but highly recommend the ranger i i would buy it again i would buy a little bit bigger boat if you can get into the 20 footers i think that's a good good size boat again with some of the problems that i've had on the on the wash over the back deck i believe with all this weight that i've added if you were to buy my boat and put all this stuff on it you'd see what i mean with all the batteries and everything else i just feel like there's a lot of heavy weight back here and so you know water coming over the back seems to be a little bit of an issue um so i'm going to be tweaking with that in terms of weight but man everything else i i, I really like it I've, I've got it everything on it that i want i'm going to add a couple more things as soon as i do i'll post some videos and also hopefully next weekend when i'm fishing the uh, co tournament lake conroe if i get out there weather permitting um i'll be able to post some more fishing videos till then see you guys next time